So the first of our fuel consumption numbers. This is pretty trippy here too. Look, they've done like a body lift on the guard. So here we go. Team Bullet doing what the big stores are doing. Welcome back, part two. A week into owning the new 79. Some of the mods we've done, some of the bits that we found new. Just stopped at the shopping center on the way home. Our first shop, and we're about to put it in the tray. We've got lunch going, but there's no water containers. You drove it, didn't you? Yeah. So how did it drive? It drives really nice. Like your car? Yeah, like my car. And that's not sarcasm this time? No. Lunch time. It's, it's the first one on the street. It is. You can't buy a bull bar. Can't get a bull bar, can't get a reverse camera. But when it does the burn, it actually comes up. In big riding, no light, but it's telling us there's a DPF regeneration in progress. And then obviously it'll work down from the red back down to the white on the gauge. Dad? Yeah. What are you doing? I'm changing the snorkel head. This isn't even five minutes old. I know it's not five minutes old, but that's terrible. It's lucky it's not a grinder on it. Now that makes me happy. Looks like your other one. <laughs> so while it is the 2.8 and it's in the current Fortuna, so Shell's Fortuna you could see was totally different. I'm not sure of these new clamp systems where the, the hoses are actually loose. Totally different fuel filter element. And the hose that fails us on the Fortuna, it's a different arrangement here as well. Different air filter, different oil filter, location and how it's mounted. This is pretty trippy here too. Look, they've done like a body lift on the guard. It's raked as well on the guard. I mean mud, water, it's all gonna get in there if you're doing crossings over your bonnet and then what does it do it just collects in there i'm sure it'll run out from under the guard but i mean it's all open so while shell and i were driving home I, she had the handheld cb and the aerial was down and she asked me over the radio whereabouts is the controller for the electric aerial and i told her right under the air conditioning knob and it's not they've taken that away they've also taken away an ashtray there's no ashtray anymore. A little bit of the 80s is gone now with the ashtray gone out of the back doors. So no ashtray means we've got no place for coins anymore. And that's probably why you don't get a, a cigarette lighter anymore either. Wow, the headlights on the new model are amazing. But what it also offers you, you're able to adjust the light. You see it running down there? So there's a dial on the dash. So I guess depending on the load you have in the back, you can adjust the light to suit. So like I said in the Earlier video, you can't get bull bars for them. I can't get a reverse camera. I rang my camera guy who does all of Toyota's cars and there hasn't been one done yet. Apparently, correct me if I'm wrong as well, the wagons and the troopies come factory with the camera in them. So it means that this head unit can take a genuine camera. So the very first thing I really want to put on is a watertight one-piece snorkel. Now, both ARB and TJM have both said it's going to be different or they're unsure. So if I can't get an aftermarket snorkel, I'm going to have to pull the factory one off anyway to waterproof it. The vibration, it's doing my head in. I just can't deal with it, especially when you're pulling up or taking off. I mean, you can actually see the movement between the two pieces. I've got to do something about it. I'm lucky my parts guy, Michael, at Sydney City was able to get me a tow bar inside of two days and also some canvas seat covers. So I'd hate to think what would happen if you didn't know someone. Coincidentally, the new one came with the exact same tray that I'm running on the white one. And the other cool thing too is the gates are interchangeable between them. Really desperate though for seat covers. So this time I'm not going to do the whole number plate relocation conversion but there's enough in the bracket where they've put it to lift it around the 35 mil so that's where it was that's quite a bit so now the highway patrol won't pin me for dragging sparks all the way down the highway <laughs> next stop nick peter and george at car tech tire and auto Let's see what it's going to take to get these 285s under with stock suspension. The first thing we'll do with the rears, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to move these brackets back one hole in the Lego setup that it is. We'll move it back to that next hole, making sure we've got clearance to the cab. So we're one hole back and we've got clearance. So maybe I shouldn't have called it Lego. 
rather Meccano. The same with the rear, that's where it was, where I've got the texture mark. We'll go back one hole. And it looks like Toyota have actually cut the mud flap to suit the pipe there, which the old model, I, I actually had to cut it. I'm expecting to get a fair bit of flex on these stock springs. That channel there, that's not too far away from the inside of that tire. So I'm gonna have to monitor that when we actually go off road. But I'm gonna mix it up a bit, so. That's the center cap that comes with the silver wheel. And then we've got the graphite one that comes with the graphite wheel. Okay, that looks cool. The size difference. Now this is the new replacement Kumo that they got us after we destroyed the sidewall up at Mudgee. So we're gonna have to make clearance to get this under there. So internally we've got a bracket, a fastening bracket and one at the top. So now picking the shape to cut it. We want to sort of go parallel with that, don't we? Everyone happy with that? Looks factory. Is that the old fog light bracket in there? So they've used the same front apron. And I'll tell you something, what's this material? It's like a satin, I don't know, grubby feeling flare. It looks like it stays dirty. You need to armor all it every morning after breakfast. And not like the older model that was all color coded, nicely painted. Or maybe this one didn't get to the paint shop being one of the first out. Or maybe they just didn't have enough money because they ended up putting in those adjustable front headlights. Maybe the budget was broken. But I do like the silver on silver with a touch of graphite. So the first of our fuel consumption numbers are gonna be on the stock tires unladen for a tank. I'm still learning how to drive this thing and I'm also pushing it quite hard off the lights. Now the numbers that we came up with, I'm really pleased with. We've got 10 kilometers per litre. So let's see how the 285s compare in the next tank. So while my favorite addition to this model is the headlight adjuster. Somebody's really thought about this console. Well, you don't call it a console, but somebody's really thought about how they've tapered that and it suits a phone. For my purposes, it's perfect. And then this little space here, GoPro actually fits there perfectly. And I really feel that the strapping here, the seatbelt strapping, I don't feel that it's as thick. Yeah, they're definitely not as thick, that's for sure. Also too, the ABS or whatever material this is for the center console, it's not only a different color, but it just feels a lot thinner. The interior light staying on for that little bit longer helps with finding the keyhole in the ignition. So IRB and TJM, two of your biggest aftermarket 4x4 accessory places. The local stores, they can't tell me if the old snorkel fits. Apparently, ARB's got one in Melbourne at their head office and they're pimping it all out with all their gear. Same with TJM. And I can't stand this vibration. So I'm gonna do my own bit of R&D and I'm gonna see if the old factory V8 one is the same. I've got all the bolts out now, I'm assuming the hose goes, well, how's that ever gonna be watertight? Look at that, just sits there. Danger, wow. I got the old one up there from the 21 model. So we'll pull it down and just have a look at the difference. So I got my hand in there and I'm in the air box now. So there's a couple of bolts, one there, and one there and that will slip out. So what we're gonna do, we wanna line up this top bracket without scratching the car. Okay, so it's nowhere near gonna fit. The hole's miles away. The new ones are gonna have to be longer. From there to there is where the hole is going to the airbox. So that means a whole new design snorkel. You're not gonna be crossing anything this high with the factory one. The top two bolts line up with that bottom one at least, but they're gonna have to make it longer and the outlet further forward. But what this means for us, our trip down to the Jewel River. It's quite high down there. And there's no way I'm gonna get a snorkel between now and then. 
I'm gonna have to take the white car. The trip to Tassie, we might get away with just siliconing this up. I mean, if I was to put some Sikaflex around that, potentially could seal. Split the two pieces and Sikaflex the join. So there was the vibration, just rattling really close together and annoying me every time it went up a gear. I can't tell you how flimsy this product is. Like I can squash that. I reckon some of the kids' toys are better quality than this. Look, while it's off now, I'll pull the two pieces apart and I'll at least silicon the join. But I mean, I think this will fade so fast. I mean, that's if it doesn't melt on a hot day. I know you're all waiting for the off-road test, the rock crawling episode with that new auto. That's gonna be in the next video. Remember to subscribe and ring that bell for notification of our upcoming videos. At least now we can maybe get away and cross those crossings and not worry. I'll have to do the same in the guard area there. But we'll let this dry a couple of days and then I'll whack it back on. Just getting used to where this is too. I freaked out for a second there. I couldn't get the key out of the ignition. That's because it was still in reverse. It's Christmas every day. All right, genuine tow bar. It's a harness for the plug at the back. That's just a plug and play. So you've got the capped end up there in the chassis. Got the canvas Toyota seat covers. Now I rate them, I've got them in the white car. We had the wet seats in the gray one and I feel that they're of equal quality. And even for a bloke with a pair of builder's hands, the job's not so hard. For those that have been following long enough, you know where we've taken our 79s. I really rate these seat covers. Now when I got the gray car, you got the tow bar with it but you had to pay for aircon. Now it looks like now you get the aircon, but you got to pay for the tow bar. Now I'm not sure what you guys are paying out there. So a genuine 3,500 kilo tow bar, even without my discount, it's not that expensive. Then with the harness and stuff, a few bucks more. I've unboxed the bar and to the eye, it looks pretty much identical to the 22, but they have changed the tongue. They changed that back in September last year. I've always complained about feeling that when I'm driving with the trailer on. But anyway, we're one step closer to towing. First job is to locate that plug so the tire will come out. I just noticed this too. Toyota haven't even done these back two bolts up. It's handy. So this here is what we need and we take the blank off. 20 minutes done. Earthed, ECU, bolted in, plug. You don't get tools like that anymore with your Toyotas. This was from a 1981 LN46. It's actually pretty heavy too. And all that weight right at the back of the car. So the springs are gonna love it. 43 kilos. You can tell I'm used to working on my own, huh? So before we bolt this thing up, we need to know how far out the chassis is to the tow bar. Now what I'm referring to is this gap here. So I can get a finger in there. So what they give us in the fitting box are packers. So what I'll do is I'll get packers in here to bridge that space and then I'll divide it in two. So by clamping one side, you get the whole gap on the other. Bit of loop here on the bolts. And what we'll do, we'll bolt this up. That's all I'll have time for today. But I do still have to put the plates on, which means I will have to drill a hole in the chassis here, unfortunately. So we're getting there, probably 50-50 chance of getting away. Still got heaps to do. Got to put airbags on, electric brakes, probably drop the tyre size in the Jayco so that we're not on such a big rake down to the tow bar. The next video, we'll have the off-road test and more mods. We may still find new stuff and be missing old stuff. But I hope you enjoyed this video. And as always, thanks for watching.